Hi guys and welcome to another old Subaru specific video. This time I'm showing how to change the U-joints in the tail shaft. Now, this is an L-series tail shaft. So 1985 to 1992, I think, L-series tail shaft. This is uh, half of the two-piece tail shaft. So the L-series one has three uni joints, one at each end of this piece and another one at the front of the shaft where it joins to the gearbox and um, I'm using these uh, greasable rebuildable uni joints the uh, the yoke or whatever this is called these are from uh, Rockford Driveline there's a part number 430-10 um, as I said they're held in with a circlip like I said and They've got uh, through hole greasing, so you can grease them, which is good to help push the old dirt and crap out. Now, the uh, the reason I'm doing this is because uh, this is a second-hand tail shaft I got from a, a wreckers in an emergency. I needed it really quick, and it worked for a five-day four-wheel driving trip. Beautiful, but um, when I went to work the following Monday, it was vibrating so bad I couldn't see anything out the rear vision the rear view window the mirrors because um, the whole car was vibrating so bad and uh, I believe this is why so in that direction it's not too bad it's a little bit tight at um, either end in this direction it's loose in the middle and tight as uh, either side like that that's it's really tight uh, basically what you need to do first of all before you take anything apart is um, mark where which position which way around they go and also I put uh, different marks different shaped marks on uh, each end so I know which end goes at the rear diff and which end goes in the middle of the car so I've marked the corresponding flanges and things on the car so I know exactly which way to put this back and don't if you're gonna rely on texture marks <laughs> um, I'd recommend against it because they just get wiped off or destroyed very easily I used a little die grinder with a carbide burr or a little grinding stone or whatever you can figure out to actually engrave on there so these being staked joints um, you can't see it because there's so much rust and dirt and shit in there, but um, there's about eight little points where the, the metal is actually staked, deformed in there to hold the cap in. And the first thing we do is we just use the press. Apparently you can do it with a hammer, but I've got a press, so I'm using a press. Press on this cap, and um, that'll push this one this way. and. If you press it hard enough or hit it hard enough it just bends the staked metal out the way and just pushes straight through it and I found it happened really easily on the press barely even noticed it so yeah let's do that so let's see what happens when I start applying pressure I'm gonna have to put my knee under this end to maybe stop it dropping but um, pumping pumping Oh, it's getting a bit tight. Oh, it's starting to move. Don't know if you can see in there. I can see a gap opening up. And there it goes. We push through the stakes and that might be as far as we can go. Yeah, it's about as far as we can go because the the yoke hits the inside of the the joint there. Now comes the fun part. But uh, yeah, you can see that is as far as we can push it now, and that's how much cap is poking out the other end. Uh, not enough to grab onto with pliers or anything like that. So what I did on the last one, I actually welded a bolt to this cap with a MIG welder and um, grabbed the bolt with some pliers and bashed the pliers with a hammer. Uh, up this way and that actually pulled the cap out of course the needle rollers went flying everywhere as well but so um, I think I might 
try that. You're supposed to be able to push down on, on this bit to make to um, push that cap back the other way so that you can actually tip some of the needle rollers over and then push this back this way again and the needle rollers will give you the extra length to be able to push this a bit further out but um, I don't actually have anything that'll reach over I need like a fork shaped tool and like I said nothing on this is square or parallel or anything it's just the worst shape to work with in a vise or a press or any kind of tooling it just ugh, it's a nightmare and it's always trying to roll off the bench and clob you in the knees or something anyway I'm gonna try welding something on that again So it always helps when the uh, when the wire comes out of the gun, it doesn't arc and it pushes your gun out the way, so you end up welding the cap to the actual yoke. So that was good, wasn't it? <laughs> Only a tiny little bit. I don't think that's what's holding it up, but uh, as you can see, the bolt just broke off, so that's in there pretty good. I completely forgot. I had a slide hammer laying around that I made in uh, trade school or something like 12, 13 years ago. So let's give that a bow. Ta-da! Good time to mention uh, when you get to this stage, uh, it's a good. It's a good time to grind out the little staked metal parts. You can see the little square, little uh, staked areas there. So each one of those square spots is some raised metal that we need to grind off. The other ridge in between is just dirt and rust, I think. That'll come out too. I'm going to attack it with one of these. Just like that. And uh, yeah, try and get some footage of it. Let's see if I can even manage it. And that's what you're aiming for, just to grind out the little staked areas. And uh, you don't want to go down any further than you absolutely need to, because the diameter below that is where the bearing cap actually registers in. So you don't want to damage that too much. So yeah, that should make getting that cap out uh, a bit easier. Not sketchy at all, what are you talking about? <laughs> and just like that, we got that bit out. And now we just knock that through with a pin punch from this side like this. Easy. Now we've got all that out, we need to clean up these boards a little bit. So all I'm gonna do for that is this tiny little wire brush in my little rotary tool. These uh, flat spots in here, see where that shoulder is, uh, this flat area is where our new circlip is going to register. So we actually want to just um, clean that up with a file or something. Clean all the dust and dirt and crap out of there. Don't need to remove too much material. Just make sure it's flat. That'll 
probably do. And uh, yeah, do that for all four ears. And for this bit, um, I can't be bothered actually pressing that that way and that way and welding things on and whatever. So, how do we fix that? Ultra thin cutoff wheel. Right, now that's all done, that's over with. Um, still got to clean up our boards, don't forget, and uh, grind down those little uh, staked over bits of metal in each side, and file our flats for the circlet. Yep, so you've already seen that, so I'm just gonna go ahead and clean everything up and get ready to assemble. You don't need to see anything more, because I've shown how to get it apart. And I just know I'm going to be finding these bloody things everywhere for weeks. <laughs> Look at them all. Oh, jeez. And so we're ready to assemble the uh, new joint into the old yokes. And uh, being sure to remember to line up our marks. Um, now the bores in these ended up being quite bad uh, surface rust. So I ended up polishing them out with a bit of emery in the multi-tool, shine them up a bit, and I'm going to put a bit of um, copper anti-seize in the bore, smear that around in there before I press the bearings in to try and um, preserve <laughs> the uh, surface a bit. might help it to stop rusting so bad. And this is what the, uh, the new joint looks like. Uh, you need to get all the caps off, and then we drop this into um, here like this. And uh, obviously try not to get any metal dust or crap in those while they're exposed like that. They're full of grease. Um, anyway, we drop that in there. And uh, being careful not to let the needle rollers drop out. We just put one of these in here like this. Just drop it in there. Try and get it square. Um, and then I'm going to push this up into the needle rollers to try and keep them in place. While I just tap that with a hammer gently to get it started and then we'll move over to the press and um, press it the rest of the way until the circlip groove pokes out past this flat on the inside that we uh, filed earlier. Now, I can't really film the next bit because I need to um, very carefully squeeze that circlip into that groove without it pinging out and flying across the room because I don't have any spares of those. So um, for doing that, this kind of channel lock plier is the best thing ever. But um, So you can kind of wrap it around the whole cap and the clip and squeeze that. And um, I'll also be holding with my other hand, having my finger over the clip so if it does pop out, it doesn't go anywhere just like that and once it's in there um, I slide the clip around so that the opening of the clip is on uh, the front here so most of the clip is actually registering on that flat spot that we filed earlier And just like that, we've got two caps in and the clips and everything. So once you got to this stage um, and you've just pressed the caps in, I found this is probably going to be a bit tight. And uh, not to worry, it's just because it's just because the caps are too close together or something like that. Um, once we've got it fully assembled, um, I'll show you how we um, fix that. So now to get that in there, it's literally the, exactly the same process as we just did with this into this. So, but it's obviously a lot more difficult because this shaft is attached to it 
that um, you need to hold the end of the shaft up while you're trying to fiddle with these. So I'm not going to film any of that. Um, you get the idea. I've shown you how to do this one. It's the same process to do the other one. Um, just another little tip, handy little hint. I've packed a bit of grease into these caps to keep the needle rollers in place and also um, helps the little uh, shafts of this stay up in there. When you when you put that in the, the housing and then uh, you push that up into the cap while you're pressing that down, I found the grease actually helps that to not fall out of the cap while you're pressing it. And uh, yeah, the excess grease, you probably saw it earlier when I was pressing the, one of those on, the excess grease just gets squirted out the, the opposite um, shafts. And uh, of course, as the, the further you get with this, the, the more fiddly it is to get the clips in. But I uh, still got, managed to get the clips in and spun around to where they want to be. And uh, like I said before, when you're putting it together, this might end up being tight, like the one I just did is way too tight. Uh, the way to fix that, it's nothing complicated, nothing to worry about. All you do is um, just grab yourself a punch or maybe even just a hammer. And you just um, tap on the housing in a few different places like this. Um, you can use a punch to tap on the end of the cap in there if you want to. Just give it a few love taps and um, it'll loosen right up. So that's nearly there. That one's really loose. So I'll just uh, fix that one up off camera. And there you have it. One assembled uni joint with new bearings and caps. And it's a greasable type. Bonus. And um, like I said, it's always trying to roll off the bench. Um, I did that little trick with the, the hammer tapping on the, on the joint to free it up. And yeah, that's nice and loose now. There you go. Beauty. So, this is the first time I've ever actually done these, like this. Um, and if these joints last as long as the original ones, then, um, you know, I'll be driving this car till... Neighbours, kids. I'll be driving this car until, uh, let me think, uh, 2050. So, <laughs> let's see if these joints last until 2051. So, there you go. I just... Um, I've done two joints on this part of the drive shaft and I got one more to do on the part that's in the car and uh, yeah let's have it all assembled and see how we go and of course now's a good time to make doubly sure that your marks line up with your marks and obviously have to bolt it back how it went together when you bolt this to the diff and the other end to the other part of the shaft and uh, yeah there you go so I hope this was helpful it was sure it was a learning process for me now I can say I've done it, and uh, yeah, they say they're not rebuildable, but um, with a bit of effort and a press or a BFH, big friggin' hammer, you can get the job done, and uh, hopefully last as long as the original ones, if not longer. And if they don't last, well, you can always just uh, easily replace them now, because you can pull the clips out and easily take the caps out. Anyway, that's um, been another super video. Thanks for watching.